So when I first started, um, the only tech that was being used is CAD, Computer Aided Design, and they had just started it, and there wasn't anybody teaching it in Portland at all. It was that new. I got this wild hair after I became a director that um, it would be so great if the kids used an iPad instead of our paper books. I was spending so much money on ink and time paying teachers to print them and bind them, and every child got one. And, um, we're seeing at each site a minimum of 1,000 students a year, right? That was a lot of books. And I thought, the kids aren't wanting to write in them. They're really interested in tech, really interested in iPads, and this was back in 14. Um, let's see if we can, in see if I can get the budget to buy a classroom set of iPads, download our books on those, and create that. With everything at Starbase, we try to remain within their zone of proximal development, so they they, don't, they haven't necessarily done any of this before, but it won't be completely alien to them. Um, they will have played with robots before. Some of them have done some programming with things like Scratch, but the combination of the two, the combination of coding and engineering and marrying that together is, uh, is really where they develop um, academically, and it's, it's really fun to see. This is a three-day uh, summer camp. It's for ages 10 to upwards of 13, um, usually 10 to 12. We don't see a lot of 13-year-olds. Uh, the first day is primarily focused on the programming aspect of robot building. So they will be working with a lot of sensors, um, things like that, different inputs to get robots to do things automated. Um, the next two days are focused primarily on engineering. So they're actually going to be building functioning uh, agile robots that are have weapons and are able to destroy each other in robot combat. The key thing is they're learning and they're almost learning without realizing it because they're having fun. And that's the, when you could get kids to accidentally learn something while they're just having fun and goofing around, like that's a real win. Um, and that's the key, and during the school year, it's pretty much an automatic win because we're competing with the regular school day and we're infinity times more fun with that. But during the summer camps, like these ones here with the battle bots, we really need to go above and beyond with the fun level because now we're competing with all day video games or baseball. So in order to be more fun than that, it's, it's really a dub. And I know we're succeeding because uh, I had to drag the kids outside to play for lunch. They were like, no, I want to work on my robots, so. You know, I've mentioned over and over again to anybody who will listen how empowering this is for the kids because they, many times, because of maybe the school district they're in or, um, and because they don't have the advantages of the after-school programs, they feel less than. And they come here and we have all this very expensive equipment that they use and not only that, we want them to use it and we trust them with it. So it starts out with that, that they really gain that. There's the team aspect that most schools don't have time for and they learn to work together and sometimes with kids who've never spoken to them all year. Teamwork is key. Uh, number one, it gives the students confidence. Um, number two, social learning is always the best learning. Um, it's, it's just good to be collaborative and uh, multiple ideas. Um, what are you going to put on that robot so it won't do that again? Um, how are you going to um, redo the design for getting Egbert to planet whatever without breaking? Um, so I think at the end of the day or at the end of the 25 hours, these kids have come and looked at things they didn't know existed at all. They didn't know it was even an option for an opportunity. And then they're leaving, little girls leaving think, from cultures that where women aren't very aggressive and say, I want to be a pilot. Yeah, I would say my favorite part, and I get to see it a lot, a ton during the 25-hour course and a ton during this course, is uh, what I call the aha moment. Um, and kids are so demonstrative when they have that. It is that moment when they're really struggling with, with everything because nobody fails at Starbase, but it's also not easy. So sometimes they'll be struggling with something for several minutes and then when you click, you could really see it on a kid's face when they just, oh, and then you, you actively see that learning happen and it's a pretty special moment. So, you know, you kind of live for that in the job. It's pretty special.